trying to cope with it. It's not the hardest thing. It's not the easiest either. So it's just, you know, you learn it and you survive. That's that's really what it is. Mm. Type 1 is you. your body does not make insulin at all. Mm. So you need to take a shot. Um, and that's vital. Like, you need to take it. Type 2 is usually uh, geared towards weight. So overweight people are more bound to have type 2 diabetes. So insulin prices are on the rise, unfortunately. Um, my feeling towards that is just, obviously it's not good. I think that they're doing it because more people in the United States are getting diabetes, whether that be type 1 or type 2. And... They're just meeting a demand, so since so many people are starting to get it, they just have to raise the price in order to keep up with, you know, producing and, and selling it. Good, let's just keep rocking and find a cure. The semester is coming to an end, and students are quickly running out of munch money. Victoria Bishop Smith went to QuickZone to find out why this is happening. Hey guys, I'm here in QuickZone trying to find out how much munching students really get for their money. Sense. Thank you. <laughs> so something that I think the school can do to change this is make their prices cheaper and also they could offer deals like grocery stores do. So like they could be like, oh like ladies chips two for five or lunch money. I have 20 cents in lunch money left. I finished my lunch money literally by March and I strongly believe it was because of the high prices in Quick Zone. Like literally to get a candy bar it's like three dollars. I have 23 cents in lunch money left. The pricing in Quick Zone makes me want to spend my own money in a bodega across the street. Well, you've heard it here. When it comes down to it, students just want more munching for their money. Coming up, sports. You've played your favorite video games before, but for how much? Find out how your nostalgia is turning into one of the largest esports industries. And intramural sports. Find out how you can become involved with one of St. Peter's fastest growing communities. You know, it's been kind of cold these past couple days. I'm really hoping for some sunny weather. I hope so too. Here we go to Victoria St. John for the weather update. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, everybody. It has been a beautiful day. Earlier this morning, we experienced a little bit of fog, dense fog with um, a little bit of clouds, but we're heading into a nice afternoon. Today, you can expect to bring an umbrella, though, later because it will shower later. Rain will come in and we will have wind gusts up to 15 miles per hour later in the day. It is currently 63 degrees and continuous showers will come in the evening. The sun rose today at 5.52 a.m. and it will set at 7.52 p.m. For your local forecast coming up, Friday, the high will be 61 with thunderstorms. Saturday, 70 degrees with rain, clearing but not as heavy as Friday's rain. Definitely a little brighter out. We can see sun creeping in some spots. By Sunday, we will dive into cooler temperatures. It will be a high 50 degrees, not too warm as today. By next week, we could expect more mild temperatures. And into Monday, we will then roll back into the high temperatures of 67 degrees. By Tuesday, 68. Wednesday will be 64. And along into the extended forecast, it will keep moving into high temperatures. Throughout the week, we will hit a high of 78 degrees. But then again, we will come right back into rain. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Oh. Thanks, Victoria. Besides liking and posting pictures, Instagram has also become the platform for multi-level marketing businesses. So how does it work? Siobhan Green has more. Made popular by social media, this money-making investment has become the answer to many financial problems for students. The algorithm is simple. Ambassadors post the sponsored ad of the product, and each ad is a paid sponsorship. 
Ambassadors can make from $400 to $2,000 a week depending on their following. Taisha Normal, a sophomore at St. Peter's, shares her experience with the dieting tea phenomenon. So I did try the Fit Me Tea. I did it for, I did two packs and it's for 14 days each and they were both $24.99. Um, I included it in my regular workout routine and I can't say that was really effective because yes, it did help a little bit with the bloating, but it was nothing like drastic. And a lot of pictures where like you see the girls like, they go from one size to a different size. Like it doesn't tell you like how many packs they use, and how many days they've been on the fit tea. And it's like, it's very discouraging because it's, it's one, you have to spend money. I'm a college student, something I don't have freely. But it's like, I'm already, I'm already fit. So it's like for me to be adding something to my routine and not seeing any changes, like it's not gonna be drastic, but not to see any changes at all, is discouraging. Like they don't show anyone that's already fit using the fit me tea. It's not really, descriptive of like what they did and what their process was. How much do I have to buy? How much money do I have to put into your product for me to start seeing my the results I want, the results I'm paying for technically? All those ads are always popping up in my DMs on Instagram. I can't tell you how many times I've seen those pills. Yeah. <laughs> oh, time for sports. Let's go to Adrian and Tom at our sports desk. Hey. hey. Oh. Thanks, guys. Tomorrow, the women's softball team travels to West Point for a doubleheader against the Army. The record currently stands at 8 and 44. The men's and women's track and field will compete in the two day MAC outdoor championships this weekend. In NBA news, the Milwaukee Bucks bested the Boston Celtics 123 to 102 in game two of the Eastern Conference Finals, thanks in part to a stellar shooting performance by guard Chris Middleton. In the Western Conference semifinals, the Portland Trail Blazers edged the Denver Nuggets 97-90 to even the series 1-1. One one. Shooting guard C.J. McCollum had a team high of 20 points. Another Boston team falls short as the Columbus Blue Jackets beat the Boston Bruins 2-1 in Game 3 of the second round of the NHL playoffs, with the Blue Jackets up two games to one. The Dallas Stars tied it up with two wins apiece against the St. Louis Blues in Game 4 of the series. The New York Mets start to bring their home record back to above 500 as they defeat the 12 and 17 Cincinnati Reds 4 to 3. Their home record now rises to 6 and 7. The Minnesota Twins slip past the Houston Astros 6 to 2 behind Jonathan Shoup's two-run homer. The Twins remain at the top of the AL Central Division. Esports is quickly growing to become one of the most dominant professional competition industries. Here's more on how many uh, people are turning their childhood passion into thousands of dollars. Ready? You've seen your favorite games being played before, but not quite like this. We're here at Pound 2019, one of the country's largest tournaments for Super Smash Bros. Melee and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Super Smash Bros. is one of the many fighting games that capitalize on the blossoming esports market. With a total prize pool of $18,000, players from around the world have gathered here in Laurel, Maryland to see some of their favorite players while trying to get their share of the money. Well, Smash in general is um, a pretty big game because of the crossovers and how easy it is to pick up. Plus the, uh, the audience that Nintendo tries to cater to is a lot younger. So it starts them off at a younger age and they grow with the console. So I, if you just solve a problem in a market, you'll be a profitable business as well, as long as that person is willing to pay, or that, that audience is willing to pay for that product. So Smash, like, uh, for example, has uh, problems with controller problem with controller issues where it's like um, tech skill or things that you're supposed to be doing in the game that make you uh, rise to a competitive level are kind of hard to do and then you can get modifications done for that. Um, so that's one part for being profitable, of being profitable in uh, that market. Not only are the games themselves profitable, entrepreneurs are now moving their expertise into esports with companies now starting to push their focus into the business aspect of video games. <laughs> the numbers, I don't know off the top of my head, but esports is constantly rising. Viewership is increasing uh, tremendously. Um, teams like in organizations like NBA organizations and leaders from that, from that realm, from uh, professional sports are looking into it. For example, like Shaq has his own team. Um, 
uh, Rick, Rick Fox has his own team. Um, it's just gonna keep growing. Uh, you gotta, you gotta remember the audience, the people who watch this stuff. Um, they really, they enjoy it just as much as a person who's watching football. As esports grows, colleges like St. Peter's are now looking to capitalize on this market and are introducing new ideas to allow esports to become one of the main focuses of their business. For Peacock TV, I'm Tom McLaughlin. Instead of competing for thousands of dollars, some St. Peter's students went head-to-head -head for a coveted intramural champion t-shirt. I checked out the recent basketball championships. St. Peter's students face off one another from September to May, each hoping to come out as champs at the buzzer. Students throw on jerseys, tie up their sneakers, and put up stats in various sports. Hello, I'm Edward Daniel, and I'm the Recreational Sports Coordinator for St. Peter's University. Uh, I run the intramural program, um, sports such as volleyball, kickball, basketball, as you see in the background, soccer, black football, we have everything. <laughs> For one player, he's been dominating the courts since 2015. I've been doing intramural for four years. It's my freshman year. And I do it, you feel me, just to show my range, to show what I'm about. It's easy for me, you feel me? Volleyball on, half court. Either way, you know, check me out. Like, playoffs coming up. I'm going for, for 90. But there's only room for one. Only one team will be crowned intramural champions, and that's why they keep going. Welcome back. You're watching Peacock TV. Thanks for the sports update, guys. Coming up next, what's hot in entertainment? I'm Diana Perez. Hi, I'm Georgiana Incarnation, and this is your entertainment news, Hudson County. Here with the latest in entertainment news, BTS K-pop group has fans going haywire over their anticipated Saturday Night Live performance in the Big Apple. Check out how far fans were willing to go. And if you thought brewing was just for coffee, you'll be surprised to see what new drinks you can spot at this year's Jersey City Craft Brew Fest. With the rise in influence, with, with the rise in influencers, in the beauty industry, men are challenging um, makeup standards. Check out what Tierney, our anchor Tierney Hartnett spoke to, uh, to St. Peter's students. What do James Charles, Jeffree Star, Manny MUA all have in common? These men have helped pave the way for so many young makeup artists, giving them a chance to start expressing their true self. Kevin Pardo and Christopher Pagan are two students at St. Peter's University who have taken on the challenge of becoming another male MUA. I started doing makeup because at first I was very like self-conscious of how my skin was looking and very like not confident per se but then honestly I just started realizing that I just liked it because of one I was able to express myself and two I was able to just create this vision of me and how I wanted people to look at me. I always liked makeup like playing with it like as a kid so I was just like, maybe I took that as a chance, like to kind of branch out and like start playing with makeup. So that's kind of like what got me started. Though both Kevin and Chris have faced backlash for being men to wear makeup, they choose to look forward and achieve their dream for the next Speaking about men in makeup. Can I roll this up like this? Speaking about men in makeup, yesterday Billboard Music Awards hosted in LA uh, had a lot of duo groups performing, a fusion of Latin and American music. Um, BTS took t home two awards for social artists and duo group. And it looks like the Marvel Universe has done that again with its final Avengers Endgame movie. Did you get a chance to see it? I haven't seen it yet, but a lot of people are talking about it, so I have to get to the theaters. It was really good. Also, coming up next week on Monday, May 6th, the Met Gala is 
theme of the unnatural, I think, is what they're mentioning, and they title it as Camp with the chairs. Harry Styles, Serena Williams, and Lady Gaga were expected to make a big presentation at it. And then to introduce, uh, K-pop is making waves all over the internet, and it's here to stay. Find out how seven guys changed fandom into standom on the latest bus of the BTS Dan World in New York City. Is it worth it? I mean, yeah, there's like, there's dedication, but then there's like an extreme because we camp outside venues for like nine hours. They took it like over a week. Going early in the and morning. And we're camping outside the same day as the show for a full show. They're here to see two songs. St. Peter students, Rehan Lalaoi, many um, who's beginning entering college, uh, who entered college at the age of 16 and is now graduating at the age of 18. But she's an aspiring film director and is headed for um, is heading for graduation, of course. Um, and it's not her only big thing coming her way. She produced she recently produced a movie that she hopes to pitch sooner um, to productions. <laughs> For those who are familiar with Rehan Lalui, who some may call a prodigy, not only is she graduating from college at 18 this month, but she is back with the new film series. We just premiered our first project at St. Peter's University uh, April 14th, Sunday, April 14th, and we had a really great turnout. We were actually sold out, which is pretty cool for our first project. The whole main youth cast was from Hudson County. I'm really passionate about telling stories using voices that really can truthfully tell those perspectives. We're in, we're out, we leave a clean exit wound. Fifth floor, administrative offices. There is a lock. This is the code. Do you think we can handle it? Nope. Great. Fans shared a jaw-dropping experience attending Rayhan's premiere in the St. Peter's Duncan Skyroom. Many enjoyed the pop music played during the film. Rayhan made sure originality would be key when she had all soundtracks produced by a young band who call themselves C+. It was a really cool experience, like building that from scratch with the band that we worked with, C+. And um, it, was, it was really fun to make that story come to life musically been working on something for so long you kind of forget what it's like to look at it for the first time so sitting there and like hearing people laughing and gasping in back of me as everything was playing I was like oh cool that's 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 what I'm doing this for you know so people can take something away from it and leave feeling maybe more thoughtful or you know get a laugh or two the young producer plans to pitch her series to TV streaming services like Netflix and Hulu with your help she can make that wish come true um, but we need help to do that, so we need to generate a social media buzz around it, and we're working on that really hard. But, you know, we can always use help from the community, so support local voices and check out all their stuff. Because um, we, we want you to see what 
local youth is capable of. Jojanette checked out Craft Brews Festival in Jersey City. Tell me about it, Jojanette. Yeah, it looks like Jersey City is very involved in the beer scene. There will be another event coming up in May about beer. <laughs> so please, um, that's all for entertainment news. Um, please check out our next anchor, uh, Kala, with a special guest. Oh, and this is the beer festival. Jersey City celebrates fermented beer and cider. Harborside's Waterfront Craft Beer Festival is a traditional German celebration of beer. This event showcases over 150 styles of craft beer, featuring many New Jersey breweries. Let's enjoy craft beer samples for the entire evening. There is also live entertainment, food, and interactive games. Made of the purest and natural ingredients on earth. And we love it and we enjoy selling it. Spreading the word about CBD, there's so much stigma. And we love doing these events. We love bringing our company out here and meeting people. I would recommend having like, you know, two to three drinks, not going above and beyond because this does sneak up on you. Lots of music, lots of beer. So it's been good. This is beer. For those who are familiar with Rehan La Louis, Damn, that booty thick. T-H-F-C-C-T-H-F-C-C-T-H-F-C-C Damn, that booty thick. Damn, that booty thick. T-H-I-double-C Thanks, Joe Jeanette. So today we have a special guest with us furthering the entertainment news. I'm Kala Ilharmucci, and this is Brian Bates. So he's a sophomore at St. Peter's University. But we're not going to have you for very long. So tell me why you chose St. Peter's University. Aren't you originally from Boston? Yes, I'm originally from Boston. Go Bruins, go Celtics. I heard all those <laughs> headlines. But, um, you know, New York City is just the place to be. If you want to be something, if you want to be someone, there's a lot um, of TV. MTV, um, movies, a lot of stuff, a lot of action if you want to go into the industry and the music industry too. So. And it's super close by. Okay, so I know you're transferring to Pace. Why did you choose Pace? I chose Pace because the location is more suburbia. Um, it has a lot of film. I'm going into film. Um, loved St. Peter's program. That's why I was inspired to go into film. Um, and I just love being close to the city. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for joining yes. us today. Check out Campus Batty. <laughs> <laughs> now back to Michael and Tierney. Thank you, Kala and Brian. We end our newscast with dogs. Canine Companions for Independence provides service dogs free of charge to people who need them. But no puppy is born knowing how to be, knowing how to be a necessary aid. St. Peter's University actually has a club where students can apply to raise puppies with the prospect of them someday becoming service dogs. Reporter Alex Antonucci in, is on the Jersey City campus with the scoop. Have you ever wanted to raise a puppy of your own? Carolina Ruiz is doing just that. Hi, my name is Gatto. Um, I'm a junior here at St. Peter's. I am on the volleyball team. My major is bio with forensic concentration, and I am raising a puppy. And his name is Hogan, it's Hogan the fifth, I think. And I've been raising him for about 10 months now. While having a personal puppy may seem like fun and games, Carolina stresses that raising Hogan has been no easy task. The student athlete often can bring him to her practices, and as a biology major, Hogan is not allowed in her labs. But soon Hogan will be turned over to professional dog trainers, and if he passes his test, he will be a full-fledged service dog for someone who needs it. The most rewarding thing for raising a puppy is that it's like a job well done if he does graduate, if he does become someone's uh, service puppy, if he does make it, you're kind of like, yeah, I did that, I raised that. 
Carolina recommends raising a puppy to anyone who is willing to challenge themselves and take on the responsibility. As she describes it, it truly is like having a child. So it was really a lot of time management. You had to learn a lot of time management and responsibility when I'm practically a parent for a good like year and a half. Seven, While six, exhausting at times, five, Carolina is thankful four. to have a companion by her side. From Jersey City, this is Alex Antony. What a cute story. That's our show for now. I'm Mike Hester. I'm Tierney Hartnett. This is Peacock TV. Thanks to Hudson Media Group for making this all happen. We'll see you next time.